Hi guys, this is Andrew with Headphones.com, and today we're going to be taking a look at the newest trend. I'm talking, of course, about planar magnetic IEMs like these ones here. Let's check them out. All right, so maybe this is just me, but it feels like every single new in-ear headphone that's coming out these days, certainly at around the more budget-oriented price points of around $200, maybe a little bit more, but also less, is a planar magnetic IEM, or uses a planar magnetic transducer. Now, this video is basically a roundup of the good planar magnetic IEMs, and I'm gonna kinda let you know which ones are the best or the most suited for me, or you know which ones I like for various different things. It is also worth noting that, yeah, there's basically a new one of these every week, and so I can't possibly have everything in this video. You know, by the time that this is, you know, live, I'm sure there'll be even new ones that are announced. So treat this as kind of like the jumping off platform for the well-established ones, or at least many of the well-established ones. And I think that other newer ones are likely to be compared against these. So think of it like that. Now, I'm just gonna let you guys know what I have in front of me here, uh, so you get a sense of what we're talking about. Um, I have from Let's Sure, the S12 and Z12, the Z12 being a collaboration with Z Reviews, hence the Z. And I also have the Raptgo Hook right here, or Raptgo Hook X, I think that's how you say it. And then of course the 7 Hertz Timeless, the one that started it all. Then I also have the 7 Hertz Dioko, which is a collab with Critical. Uh, and then I have the Dunu Talos right here. Um, and then I also have another one, the uh, Zitian Wu from Tangzu. And this one, um, it might not be talked about as much, but it probably should be. And that's basically it. That's what I have here in front of me. I'm ignoring ones like the Stellaris here on purpose because, yeah, I took one look at the frequency response of that one and no, 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 no. <laughs> now, a quick disclaimer here, the S12 and Z12 uh, were sent over by Hi-Fi Go for evaluation as well as the Zetian Wu. Uh, big thanks to Hi-Fi Go for sending that along. Uh, the 7 Hertz Timeless, uh, Joko and Raptgo Hook were sent along by Linsoul. So big thanks to Linsoul for sending these along. And then the uh, Dunu Talos, I don't know where this is from, sorry. Um, but of course, uh, as usual, nobody's paid me to say anything positive or negative about any of these and all thoughts and opinions are my own. Uh, let's dive into each of these now and I'll let you guys know what the differences are among them. And I'm gonna start with the S12 and Z12. The S12, it was the original of these that came out before the Z12. And you can think of the S12 and Z12 as being more of a fun sound signature. It has definitely some colorations and some flavor there. This is not strictly neutral. To me, this one, when I first heard it, I thought, yeah, this is just a more exciting flavored colored kind of sound signature that um, it, it's actually very engaging when you first listen to it. The only real drawbacks here are that, you know, if you're looking for a more neutral or smoother kind of sound signature, uh, this probably isn't it. And then also it doesn't have the most clear presentation for the trailing ends of tones, which is something that if, you know, actually, a lot of these other ones on the table do a better job at um, compared to this one, but this does do reasonably at um, you know basically all the other sort of intangible uh, subjective qualities. Um, I think really with, with the S12, this is one of those where it's, I would say it's solid, but at the same time, it's still not exactly for me for what or for what I'm looking for um, in an IEM. Um, certainly at around uh, you know this price point, I am looking for something a little bit more neutral. But if you like a little bit more of excitement and character in uh, in your music, um, the S12 can give it to you. And then Zeos comes along, and after you know months of painstaking slaving away at figuring out you know what to do with a tuning to change the S12 into the Z12. Um, he, he wound up uh, you know, asking for them to give it a bass shelf, and so they did that. But I think it's just another flavor of a good thing here. This is just you know more of that sort of solid sound signature, the S12, just with more bass. So in some ways, it kind of makes the most sense if you're gonna go for this kind of colored flavored presentation uh, to go with the one that has the more bass if you're a bass head, right? That's that's what I would do. In the sub bass, we're talking you know upwards of four or five dB, but it does taper, so um, you know it's. It's not the most uh, crazy lift for the bass, but it is still something. Moving on, let's talk next about the Dioko, which is right here, and this is the collaboration with Crin. Let's first just quickly look at the shell. Um, and I'm gonna be extra critical here because, well, Crin would, Crin would want me to. Um, the Dioko shell resembles a combination of what I can only describe as your grandmother's old brooch and a toilet bowl. So if you're really into the brooch toilet bowl aesthetic, the Gioco is something for you. This is also, um, you know, these are planar magnetic uh, in-ears and planar magnetic transducers, the tuning for them isn't as easy to do or hasn't been figured out, you know, quite the same way that 
um, balanced armature hybrids and tribrids have been. And so getting the tuning right on these often requires some more esoteric shell designs. And with the Dioko, yeah, it uh, it definitely is. Nonetheless, the sound quality here, it's actually um, very technical. It's more technical as far as the clarity for trailing ends of tones than the S12 and the Z12. And the tuning here is, it aims a little bit more for neutral, but the problem with the tuning of the Dioko is that the treble in a number of places, and yes, we're talking about the filter changed ones as well. I noticed it in particular in the upper treble or like mid to upper treble, it, it is a bit sharp and it has this sort of you know glassy sheen to the whole thing. Uh, these are just words. Um, but yeah, it was a bit fatiguing for me. And so I tend to not gravitate to this one, even though it does actually have remarkably good technical capabilities for the price, probably the best for the price out of all of these, but I would not use this one personally without EQ. Next up is the Zetian Wu from Tangzhou. Uh, you can see the lovely purple uh, shell on this. Uh, I don't know, know if purple is quite my color, but this one I do find to be one of the better looking ones and also uh, it's quite comfortable for me. The other key thing with the uh, Zetian Wu is that this is the best tuned planar magnetic in-ear uh, headphone out of all of them. I'm just going to say that flat out. I think this one is the best tuned. Um, it is a little bit much on the ear gain for me. So the upper mids and lower treble, it's a bit much there because again, my ear canal, but as far as that balance is concerned, this is the one that has that tuning dialed in just, just right. The only thing with this one is that the technical capabilities here, while they are fine, they are... They don't sound like a planar. So some of the advantages that you get with planar magnetic headphones as far as instrument separation is concerned, as far as clarity for trailing ends of tones, um, as far as that sort of incisiveness is concerned, um, you don't really get that with this. It Like if you told me this was a dynamic driver headphone, I would have been like, yeah, that's a dynamic driver headphone. I do think that's something to keep in mind is that if you're looking for a specific planar kind of flavor and character, um, this is less like that. Um, and it is more like the other ones, but still really good. I, I like this one a lot. Then moving on to uh, the Dunu Talos. Okay, this is this is a bit of an odd one of the group here. Um, it's also one of the newest ones and flat out is the best looking one by a country mile out of all of them. For the sound quality of this one, uh, there's something to keep in mind, it, and it's that there are two modes here. There's the planar magnetic only mode, and then there's also the planar plus balanced armature mode. Um, so there are additional drivers that um, get engaged when you hit this little switch. Let me just dive in here um, with the the sound signature of the Dunu Talos. It's aiming for a mostly neutral presentation, but it is a little bit forward and sharp in the upper mid range, giving a bit of that sort of shrillness character that I think is a bit fatiguing still. Um, it is one that I did have to EQ. In the planar only mode, I found that the Talos is actually decent. It's not great, but it's decent, all right? Let's, let's go there. And then you have the planar plus BA mode, and that is pure treble madness. That is just treble craziness. This is this is IEMs for the deaf. Uh, when you <laughs> when you have uh, the balanced armature mode engaged, so I would recommend if you're considering this one, consider just the planar mode. And in that mode, I this is one that I'm gonna absolutely recommend, and it's actually the one out of all of these that I kind of prefer. And that's because the technical performance of this one is really solid. So make no mistake, uh, this is the one that if you are in the EQ gang and you want to EQ down some of that trouble and don't even bother with the BA mode, or at least I don't recommend bothering with it, unless you know that you are like, you know, missing some of the upper frequencies up there and you'd like to compensate for it, then that makes sense. But yeah, stick with the planar mode on this one. And you're willing to sort of do just a little bit of adjustment. Three filters on this, turned it from something that was decent to something that is really, really nice. And then we get onto uh, the Raptco Hook X and the Timeless. And I'm gonna kind of like hold these up uh, together here because it's worth talking about these in conjunction because they have a nearly identical frequency response to one another. So the overall sound signature of these two is very, very similar. They sound pretty close to me. There's one key difference in the sound and it's that I find the treble on the Raptco hook to be just a little bit smoother and it's maybe less timbrally compromised. That's, that's again, just words. On the Timeless, uh, this one, uh, it's maybe a little bit more technically impressive, just a tiny little bit. There are trade-offs either way you go here. On the Raptco hook, this is a open back design. So sound's gonna leak in and out. And on the Timeless, my only real issue with it, apart from a couple of quirks with the tuning, is that for whatever reason, it just sort of falls out of my ear over time. Initially, it's like, okay, solid, it's in there. And then 
maybe like 30 minutes goes by and it'll be like out here. And then another 30 minutes goes by and it's like dangling off of my ear. And then another 30 minutes goes by and it's like on the desk because it just fell out. And so that's kind of an issue with the timeless is that, yeah, the fit is, at least for my ear canal, um, it's, it's not the greatest. But in both cases, these are probably the ones that I would have the easiest time recommending by default because they're the best combination of um, sensible, reasonable tuning and technical prowess, if that makes sense. There are a couple quirks though. Um, there is an upper bass or mid bass to upper bass elevation um, on both of them. And it is a little bit bleedy into the mids or it, it's not it's not extreme. The mids still come through with good clarity, but the bass boost is not a distinct one, right? It's a more gradual one. The other quirk is that there's a mid treble peak on both of them. And it does cause a little bit of that sibilance coming to come through. Sibilance or shrillness, whatever you want to call it there. It's not enough to where it's unpleasant uh all the time it's not super painful like there are some other ones here like again the talos with the balanced armature mode engaged just just pure treble madness it, it's not like that it's it's just a subtle kind of like yeah maybe like three or four db excess i'll call it that it's enough where for me i probably would still choose a more balanced tuning in the treble or a slightly more laid back tuning if that were available at this price. <laughs> um, but the technical benefits of both of these, I think, make them uh, worth strong considerations. That's really how it breaks down for me. But regardless, um, that basically does it for this planar IEM comparison. And once again, these are all solid. So you can't, I think you could probably go wrong. Yeah, you could probably go wrong with, with you know, yeah forget I said that. Um, but uh, I do think that these all represent good value for their respective price points. And so in that sense, um, yeah, these are all solid. I just think it's worth knowing which one is going to have the sound signature that's going to be best for you. Anyways, that's going to be the end of this video. If you guys want to check out the frequency response, the measurements that have been done of each of these and compared, you know, so you can see the relative balance done on the RIO 402 coupler here, there's a link to that in the description and that's to the headphones community forum. We also have a Discord now, um, and this is where you can go for purchase advice. I'm in there all the time. You can chat with me in there, um, but also there's tons of other people in there, and this is where we're also posting measurements. Like As soon as we do them, they go straight into the, into the Discord, so definitely join our Discord. Link in the description for that. And as usual, if you guys are looking for more articles, reviews, and all kinds of stuff to do with IEMs, headphones, audio, and related stuff, check out the headphones.com guides, articles, and reviews section there, um, also linked in the description. But yeah, that does it for me, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.